welcome to day number three. Um, today is going to be all about creating a life filled with mind-blowing memories that t take our breath away and really allow us to experience life on a deeper level. So why I chose that topic is that from studying tourism, from traveling a lot, from observing people, I really noticed that a lot of people let their day, their holiday, their experience of something beautiful get ruined by one single bad thing. There can be one minute of negativity, one minute of something that doesn't go how they expect it and the whole day is ruined. The whole holiday is just like crushed and crumbled because they something did not go the way they expected. Like the plane is delayed, the person at the checkout is like very unfriendly, there's a driver cutting you off and suddenly from like having an incredible beautiful experience, from really enjoying your holiday, you went from the super high of like wow this is amazing to like BAM! Hi Jennifer! How are you doing today? Like BAM! That sucks. Everything sucks. Like this whole holiday was just a shit excuse my language <laughs> um, it was just bad like what is happening here like we did not enjoy it and we focus on that experience and then a lot of times what happens is people come back from their getaway from their holiday and instead of focusing on all the beautiful things that happened they're like yeah well it was very exhausting I felt very unsafe I have a lot of friends that go to like South Africa and they have a moment where they feel unsafe in like the streets of Johannesburg. And they come back and say like, yeah, it was very unsafe. I was like, uh-huh, was it really unsafe? Or was it just one second where you felt like unsafe? One street that you entered where you're like, I'm not sure if I should be here at night by myself. And that's a problem. We generalize things so much that we shift our perspective and do not actually focus on what's really going on. And the thing is that we can't always protect ourselves from bad experiences. No matter what we do, we cannot protect our heart, our feelings, our mind from like, oh, I'm just like so sent out. No matter how much you meditate, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you, whatever you do to like be in like a high mind state, we cannot always protect ourselves from negativity, from things going wrong. Um, but what we can do is really, as Jennifer said, it's all about the mindset, work on how we're reacting to it. It's really all about how we react to something and what's going on. We can control who we are being when this happens and how we react to it. We choose if we let our emotions take over and let them run the show or if we take control back and we're like, okay, you know what? The plane is delayed, but there's nothing I can do about it now. Even if I complain, even if I'm like super angry right now for the next five hours or the next 10 days, I'm not gonna get home faster. So what's the freaking point? Even if the person at the checkout is really rude, so what? Do I have to get upset now and make everyone else that I get in contact with into a bad mood? What's the freaking point? It is useless. It is not helping us. It doesn't get us anywhere. So the question is really like, who do you want to be in these moments? And it's really about focusing on not letting the negative emotions, the negative feeling emotions dominate the experience. And don't let them determine who you are and how you show up in this world and how you feel about yourself and really how you remember the story. And my favorite thing when I get into a bad situation, I'm like, how do I want to remember this situation? How do I want to remember this moment? How do I want to tell the story in hindsight? And I always try to create a fun story out of it, a learning experience, something. For example, when I was in, in Bali, I got ripped off by um, the money exchange people. And I normally don't really exchange money because, you know, in some countries you exchange like a hundred dollar bill and you get like half a million and you're like, oh my God, so much money. 
And in some countries like Tanzania, the largest bill is $5. So you imagine the amount of money that you carry around with you. So I prefer to go to the ATM. But my thing is, that time I had a bunch of cash. I don't really enjoy traveling with a lot of cash too much. So I was like, okay, let me just change it. And the guy counted the money in front of me. But they were so good. I didn't even notice what he was doing. I ended up with like half the money. So now what can we do? I could get so mad at him. I could say what actually I heard from a lot of people. Bali's a shithole. Everyone sucks. Everyone is trying to rip you off. Everyone is just after your money. Or you can say, oh, I noticed that they're really good at what they're doing. And what they're doing is working. And I tried focusing and I didn't even notice. So next time I learned my lesson, I'll go back to the ATM or I bring another person with me and we're both really focused on changing the money and we really make sure that we leave the place with all the money that we need, all the money that we get from the money we're changing. Do you see that there's two different mindset, two different possibilities of either saying like, oh my God, that's such a bad person and he shouldn't be doing that. Of course he shouldn't be doing that, but this is his way of making money. This is his way of life. It has nothing to do with me. If I fall into the trap, my responsibility. I did not pay attention. I did not notice. <laughs> now I can learn from it. <laughs> it costs me a bit of money, but sometimes lessons do cost money and that's okay. I'll learn from it. Now I can move on and next time I can do better. Jennifer said, mad. <laughs> you escape. Now you're super mad. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh my God, that is so funny. Another example is when you're in Bali and you're driving on a scooter, the police always goes after the tourists because the tourists are the ones with the money, with the cash, and they're pretty good at finding something. Even though like you have legit everything, your driver license, your helmet, everything, they always find something. And you always see Bali police stopping tourists. I've never <laughs> seen them stopping a Balinese, to be honest. And I was there for quite a while. And the fun thing is, so many people go and like, oh my God, the police are so corrupt. They're so bad. Like, okay, then why do you stop? Why are you driving without a helmet? Why are you driving? Why are you like breaking the rules? Just because everyone else is doing it? Well, you're getting yourself into the situation. You know, I got stopped by the police once because apparently I turned somewhere where I wasn't allowed to turn. Because I had to stop and look at my freaking Google Maps to see where I'm going. Because I didn't want to get lost. And they pulled me over and I showed them my ID and I showed them everything. They're like, well, you stopped somewhere where you weren't so allowed to stop. And then he was looking at my ID and I don't have a scooter ID because for us, like the motorcycle, like we don't have scooter scooter things on our ID. We only have like the real motorcycle ones and I don't have it. I only have a car ID. And he's like, well, you're actually not even allowed to drive the scooter. So like you have to pay me, I think it was half a million Balinese money, I don't even know how much. It wasn't too much, but I just didn't have the cash on me anyway. I'm like, no. <laughs> I just started laughing at him because he pulled the cash book out of his shoe and showed me how much I had to pay. And the fun thing is, I had no idea what was standing there because it was written in, in Balinese, Indonesian, whatever. So I was like, no. <laughs> I just started laughing at him. I'm like, sorry, but like, I don't, I can't even read what you're saying. Like, you can just tell me whatever you want. <laughs> And I know they're not really serious. They're just trying to make money and a lot of time it works. And a lot of people in Bali are quite poor and they make this money to like feed their family, help out other people. And I totally understand. But first I didn't have the money and I didn't want to pay him. And I didn't see why I should have paid him. So what I did, I just took my driver license. I took the paper he had in his hand, got it back, <laughs> went to my bike and just left. Easy. <laughs> Like, I did not argue with him, because why should I? It's not gonna make it better. He knows what he wants, I know what I want. Either he gets what he wants, or I get what I want. In this situation, I did not see any win-win possibility. But also, I did not go and say like, oh my god, Balinese police, they're so bad, they're so terrible. And no, <laughs> let me just grab my stuff and leave. And through that, I started creating a story that I think it was a really fun experience. Just because he was like so shocked. I was like, who's that person? How can she just leave? Like, who does she think she is? And she just grabs her stuff and goes. 
But you know, sometimes we don't actually have to interact with every argument, with every bad situation that we're invited to. It's always our choice how we react to it and who we're being. And what I find very important, I love all these like laughing faces, so funny. Who we are being in these moments really determines who we are. And if we're able to create a story out of it, if we're able to learn a lesson out of it, if we're able to take radical responsibility and we can still create incredible experiences, then that's all that counts. And that is why emotional intelligence is so important. Because why do we have to let one small coincidence in one day, in a minute, in an hour, take over the whole experience and let our whole holiday, our whole getaway, our whole weekend get ruined because of that? Is it worth it? I don't think so. I really don't think so. I really believe that everyone gets to live their best life in every single second of life. Even if things go wrong, <laughs> my God, it happens. It really happens. Like nobody is perfect. There are gonna be things that do not go the way you want them to go. Always, no matter at what level you are, no matter how good you are at something, everything happens for us, not to us. Yes, this is one of my favorite, favorite sayings. There's always a lesson behind, there's always a memory, and sometimes we don't understand it right away, but we will understand it in hindsight. And that is what is so important to really focus on like, who do you wanna be and how do you wanna tell the story? And just by focusing on these two questions, it really helps us to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Because to be honest, is it worth being upset? Is it worth being angry or frustrated? Is it really worth it? Is it worth your time? Is it worth being like that in a negative feeling emotion for a whole day? Do you enjoy being in these kind of feelings? Because I know I don't. Sometimes we feel like we are allowed to feel it. And that's okay. But do we have to feel it the whole day? So really what helps is how do you want to remember this? Oh my god. <laughs> Caddy just got up and scared me. <laughs> oh my god. And it's really about starting to create memories, blowing your own mind, creating a life that really is beyond what you can experience. And as we said yesterday, it's not about the things we do, but who we are when we're doing them. We can travel the world and do the most incredible things if we're not actually enjoying them. And how we do that, how we actually focus on creating more memories, super easy, starting to be really present trying to be intentional with what we're doing, the experience we're creating, who we want to be in that moment. And the intentionality really shifts on how we show up, focusing on our attitude. And if we ever find ourselves in a place where we're like, I don't really want, enjoy being here, shift your attitude. Think about what you're grateful for, think about how you can change this around. My friend the other day was like, oh, my cousin asked me if we can like come see her, but I don't really want to go because she's kind of boring. I'm like, well, why don't we bring a board game and make it fun? And he's like, oh my God, that's such a good idea. I'm like, yeah, it's all about the attitude and what we make out of it, right? And instead of just sitting there drinking tea and like talking about life, because she works for the UN, so she really likes talking about politics and stuff with human rights. And, you know, everyone has different opinions about that. And that's totally fine. Like, he doesn't enjoy talking about it, my friends. So we're like, why don't we just bring a board game? We make it fun, you know, we have something to do, we have something to talk about, and we're not just like chatting. Bam! Different attitude, different thing. How can we create another memory? They loved it so much, we're gonna do it again this Friday. <laughs> easy! Like, life gets to be easy. But really, it comes down to also focusing on the positive thing and really trying to take. When we're somewhere, trying to take it all in, really trying to anchor the moment in, trying to be present, trying to focus on the surroundings. What do you see? What do you feel? Who are you being? And slowing down for a moment. We're so busy all day long and doing, 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 doing. 
slowing down and focusing on what we're actually experiencing, what we're feeling, really helps us to anchor in the moment and to remember it, to remember it better, to remember the details, to really remember the moment. Because the moment will be gone in a split second and it will just be another memory. Because the present moment is really just now. And five minutes is already, five minutes ago is already in the past. <laughs> so if you can, try to increase the feelings. Focus on what you're feeling and try to increase the positive feelings. Really enjoying the moment. Really trying to create a memory intentional. And that will really shift how you show up for yourself, how you experience life, how you live life, and how others experience you. Because others can only experience us if we experience ourselves in a certain way. Does that make sense? I hope so. So when you're looking back a year from now, I know it's already February, which really blows my mind how this January just like flew by. When we're looking back at this year, I really hope that we look back at the year that's filled with beautiful memories with a ton of lesson because this is what we learn. We actually need the lesson to like learn and grow and evolve. The most mind blowing memories, incredible moments, beautiful lessons, amazing people that we connected with. So many things that we wanted to do, achieve, see, feel, whatever you want, just filled with magic. And for that, I really created my mastermind, Adventurously Alive, which is an ongoing travel mastermind. It's not just for traveling, but it's a travel lifestyle mastermind that really helps everyone travel more, even if it never seems like they could travel. Travel on like the lowest budget possible or even luxury travel. Getting to the frequency of travel so you can easily attract crazy deals, <laughs> opportunities, all day long or even start becoming a tourist in your own city and just creating more adventure in your normal life but really starting to create a life you're fully and truly in love with managing your emotions so you can actually enjoy living the life you're creating and not being taken away by your emotions and let your emotions run the show and all the cool stuff whatever you need we'll talk about it there's so much room and space for communication, for questions, for all the things that you really need to really create your best life. We're also gonna go into the business part of it, of how you can take pictures for your business, how you can like even write off stuff um, so it actually becomes cheaper, how you can use travel as a business expense, for example, but really starting with who you need to be in order to create your best life. Traveling more, getting to the frequency of, uh, frequency of travel, attracting the most mind-blowing experiences, being more intentional with life and with the memories you're creating. So you're actually creating a life that you're fully and truly in love with, the most mind-blowing experiences and memories. Because at the end, that is all that counts. So if you're interested in that, it's the most incredible container I've created ever. It's two live calls a month, plus normal content dropping um, every month, and it's 111 a month. So it's a pretty good deal. Plus you're having a community chat, so whenever you have a question, you can always ask me. You always support it. You always get whatever you need. If you're interested in that, let me know. I'd love to have you. And other than that, just keep remembering, live your best life and don't let your emotions run the show. So thank you so much for watching today. If you have any questions, let me know. Love you very much. I'm going to see you tomorrow.